welcome to today's classes on epic theater. Theater in the 20th century continued and extended the projects of realism and naturalism that emerged much earlier. During this period, there was a great deal of experimental theater that rejected established conventions. These experiments form part of the modernist and postmodernist movements. They included forms of political theater as well as aesthetically oriented work. Epic theater, the theater of cruelty and the so-called theater of the absurd emerged during the 20th century. Epic theater, also known as Episkis theater in German, is an offshoot of the German expressionism employed in arts, theater, poetry and films. The epic form of drama was primarily political and was intended to appeal to reason rather than the emotions. The name and theory were derived from Aristotle and pioneered in Germany in the late 1920s by Bertolt Brecht and his associate Erwin Piscator, 1893-1966. Though the name and theory were derived from Aristotle, epic theatre erased Aristotle's emphasis on catharsis or release of emotions. The term epic theatre was borrowed by a German theatre director and producer, Erwin Piscator, during his first year as a director of Berlin's The Volksbühn or The People's Theatre. There are certain arguments that prevail in the coining of epic theatre. There is a speculation that Brett did not coin the term epic theatre himself. It is also believed that Brett's fellow German collaborator, Erwin Piscator, actually coined the term and later Brett borrowed it from the great epic poems of literature such as the Homer's Odyssey and the Iliad or Milton's Paradise Lost. There is also the claim that the term epic theatre was already used in various avant-garde theatre circles in Germany by the time Brett claimed it as his own. Piscata aimed to encourage playwrights to address issues related to the contemporary existence. This created a new subject matter for the stage. It was staged through the use of documentary effects audience interaction as well as creating ways in which the audience feel distant from the event. Upper theatre, a direct form of theatre, had its own artificiality. It emphasizes the socio-political content of drama and not its emotional manipulation of the audience or on the production's formal beauty. Upper theatre is an ideal theatre with social and political relevance that would stimulate playgoers into both thought and action. Some of the alternative names given to the genre are theatre of commitment, theatre of social action and theatre of social conviction. Historically, realism was believed to be a remedy that preceded epic theatre. But in the 20th century, realism was challenged by artists who experimented. Already, Henry Gibson, who was instrumental in composing realistic social dramas, had sown the seeds of Expressionism in Sweden and Germany. Expressionism thrived in Germany during the early 20th century, that is, between the years 1910 and 1924. The outbreak of World War I led to the disillusionment of young writers. A group of German Expressionists took to an intense subjectivism venting out their inner feelings and thereby vehemently attacking the society that betrayed them. Expressionism was effective even in films and dramas which projected real life as it is and negated any kind of alter reality. The creative contributions of the early German Expressionists were soon captured by Bertolt Brecht who was instrumental in changing the course of German and West Western theatres. His idea of theatre was radical and enabled artists to use theatre as a political instrument. Brett conceived that epic theatre would release the feelings, insights and impulses. It is possible within the particular historical field of human relations where the events take place. It also employs and encourages those thoughts and feelings which help transform the field itself. Expressionism and epic theatre enjoyed the greatest lifespan amidst all anti-realist movements. 
predecessors, practitioners and successors. The first major modernist movement in the theatre was symbolism, which produced its own theatres, most notably Lung Po's Theatre de l'Oeuvre, founded in Paris in 1893. The movement had its own dramatist, headed by Maeterlinck and later by Ibsen. They initiated their own approach to staging and scenic design, most strikingly expressed in the work of Appiah and Craig. Further, the first modernist movement in the theatre after symbolism to have a major international impact was Expressionism, centred in Germany in the second and third decades of the 20th century. Breath is best known for the creation of a new kind of theatre which he called epic theatre and for the plays that continue to be studied and performed today. He is famous for reading and absorbing Karl Marx's Das Kapital, a well-known follower of communism who never actually joined the party. He was certainly instrumental in developing a political theatre that was designed to change society and bring about a change in the way people thought. He has also had many brushes with the Nazi government and went into exile. The non-realistic dramas of Egger Strindberg and the plays of Frank Wedekein provided the major inspiration for expressionism in theatre, a movement which often emphasised subjective perceptions of reality through such devices as elliptical and exaggerated speech, abstract and distorted movement and elements of costume and scene. The key figures of the epic theatre tradition across the world are Erwin Biscata, Vladimir Mayakovsky, Sevalot Meyerhold, Bertolt Brecht, Leopold Jesner, Frank Wedekind, Max Reinhardt, Grotowski and Arthur. Brecht's Man is Man, published in 1926, is usually considered the first epic theatre play. Piscator's offerings included a dramatization of Tolstoy's War and Peace. The tradition was continued by many of the left-wing playwrights of the 1960s and 1970s. Fundamental Characteristics of Epic Theatre Epic Theatre is constructed in the form of a narrative which turns spectators as mere observers. It urges the spectators to act and thereby forces the audience to make decisions. It provides a realistic picture of the world which makes them face something. It is presented as an argument which is brought to a point of recognition. The audience stand outside and study the experiences. The focus of inquiry in all epic theatres is the human subject. The focus is on the course of the story and each scene or sequence becomes very important. It is heterogeneous and has a lot of ups and downs. Humans undergo a process of evolution. The process of being a social animal determines thoughts and therefore reasoning is given more utmost importance. Like all theatre forms, epic theatre too has certain fundamental characteristics that make it unique and stand out from the other forms. They are structure, staging, design, historification, music and acting and characters. It is important to have a fair knowledge of these fundamentals to comprehend epic theatre. Structure Epic theatre motivates its audiences to construct their own interpretation of events. The events presented are episodic and as a disconnected montage of scenes and often not in a chronological order. The plays are purposefully open-ended so that the audience needs to arrive at its own conclusion of how the events are linked together. The events are narrated on a grand scale unrestricted by time and place. Staging The stage is set specifically to enable audience see what's happening behind the scenes. The stage is often bare to prevent the audience from being absorbed in the fictional reality of the play's setting. Usually exposed stage, machinery such as the lighting grid and exposed wires are used. The back wall and wings of the stage is also exposed. Design. They intentionally subvert the feeling of realism. Technology is often used to project words and films that comment on the performance on stage. Historification. The plays project news, clips, 
to make the audience be aware of their historical context. Usually, placards are used to announce the beginning of a scene. The design of epic theatre place looks mechanical or industrial. Music Music played during the epic theatre plays are meant to comment on the action, not to add the mood of the scene. There is always a discordant movement that accompanies or undercuts the action on stage. The musicians are seated on stage along with the actors and not hidden under the stage. Epic theatre incorporates popular culture in an ironic fashion. Acting and characters The actors or characters on stage keep the audience critical of the play's heroes. The idea is distance the actors and disconnect them from their respective characters. Unlike other plays, actors should present their character instead of being the character. The epic theatre plays project the notion that even the hero of the story has flaws. Structural or thematic specificities and philosophical insights. Epic theatre replaced the linear organisation of the traditional plays which observed the unities of time, place and action with an episodic structure. An important feature of epic theatre is the alienation effect in which actors and audiences are discouraged from identifying with either the characters or the scenes depicted. Brett's perspective was Marxian and his intention was to appeal to his audience's intellect in presenting moral problems and reflecting contemporary social realities through stage. He wished to block their emotional responses and hinder their tendency to empathize with the characters and become caught up in the action. To this end, he used alienating or distancing effects to cause the audience to think objectively about the play, to reflect on its argument, to understand it and to draw conclusions. He was influenced by the horrors of World War I's human cost, the suffering of the middle and lower classes during the post-war recessions of the 1920s and the Great Depression of the 1930s and by the teachings of Marxism. Critical Reception Breath loathed the theatre of realism. He likened the realistic theatre to the effects of a drug. The realistic performances specified its audience, while Brett's plays were didactic and aimed to teach or instruct their audience. He used the term Lerstuk, meaning learning play. Social activist theatre wanted the spectators to make change in their own world outside the theatre walls. In 1926, Breath embraced Marxism and his theatre techniques after this point served his Marxist beliefs. Breath's umbrella title for a range of non-realistic techniques is Wolfram Dunk's effect or E-effect in German or A-effect in English, short for alienation effect misleadingly translated over the decades as distancing effect. The recent and more accepted translation is to make the familiar strange or estrangement. Going into the second half of the century, when the two politically dominant ideologies, liberalism or capitalism and socialism or communism were engaged in a cold war, modern theatre in terms of content and form started to stagger like an old human being. It is most clearly depicted in Beckett, the last of the modernists. Breath by then had been an accepted member of the mainstream modern theatres and no longer considered an avant-garde. The form and content of epic theatre was commonly quoted in new experiments. Zanto stated that modern theatre's experiments, however, showed, quote, a kind of menopause of modernism which cohabited with a series of techniques that depict change as a basic order of existence." Unquote. Zanto further comments that Beckett's works suggest the frightening implicitness that the late 20th century concept of art is in profound need of transformation. Now that postmodern ideas have started to surface, a new take based on these ideas in theatre has been inevitable. Major Contribution to the Dramatic Genre 
he was obsessed with the idea of abandonment and as a result he abhorred ending relationships the women in his life were important for his writing career and modern feminist detractors often try to claim that his mistresses in fact wrote much of what he takes credit for although not true women such as elizabeth hopman did write significant parts of the three penny opera it is also said that one of his mistresses margaret stefflin helped him write the good woman of sejuan and mother courage and her children hella Wolyoki allowed him to transform her comedy The Sawdust Princess into her Puntilla and his Manmati. Brett's writings show a profound influence from many diverse sources during this time and the remaining years of his life. He studied Chinese, Japanese and Indian theatre, focused heavily on Shakespeare and other Elizabethans and adopted elements of Greek tragedy. He found inspiration in other German playwrights notably Buchner and Wedekind and also enjoyed the Bavarian folk play. Brett had a phenomenal ability to take elements from these seemingly incompatible sources, combine them and convert them into his own works. His plays during this period include Saint Joan of Slaughterhouse, The Exception and the Rule The Good Woman of Sejuan, Mother Courage and Her Children, Galileo, Her Puntilla, His Manmati, and The Resistible Rise of Arturo Uy. Now let us summarize the session. Epic theater is one of the influential theatrical forms that emerged in the 20th century. The name and theory were indebted to Aristotle and were pioneered in Germany in the late 1920s by Bertolt Brecht and his associate Erwin Pescator 1893 to 1966 though the name and theory were derived from Aristotle epic theater challenged Aristotle's idea that plays allowed the release of pent up emotions or catharsis Pescator aimed to encourage playwrights to address issues related to contemporary existence it created a new subject matter for the stage and staging happened through the use of documentary effects audience interaction as well as creating ways in which the audience feel distant from the event the key figures of the epic theater tradition across the world are erwin pescator vladimir markovsky sevolod meyerhold bertol brett leopold jesner Frank Wedekind, Max Reinhardt, Grotowski and Arthur. Like all theater forms, epic theater too has certain fundamental characteristics that make it unique and stand out from the other forms. They are structure, staging, design, historification, music and acting and characters. Epic theater replaced the unities of time, place and action. with an episodic structure an important feature was the alienation effect in which actors and audiences were discouraged from identifying with the characters or scenes depicted brett's perspective was marxian and his intention was to appeal to his audience's intellect in presenting moral problems and reflecting contemporary social realities through the stage before we attend the next session Please try to answer the following questions. Read an epic theater play and analyze the fundamental characteristics of epic theater. Bertolt Brecht's dismissal of Aristotelian claim about his theory of drama and performance. The specific themes in 10 epic theater plays by Brecht and his compatriots. A critical appreciation of the construction of an epic theater play. compare and contrast the plays and dramaturgy of ibsen for further references theater performance and the historical avant-garde by gunter burgos palgrave macmillan new york 2005 theater studies the basics by robert leech rotledge oxen 2008 
The Continuum Companion to 20th Century Theatre, edited by Marvin Carlson, Colin Chambers, London, 2002. Key Concepts in Drama and Performance, Second Edition by Kenneth Pickering, Palgrave Macmillan, New York, 2010. Modern Drama in Theory and Practice, Expressionism and Epic Theatre, Volume 3 by J. L. Stan, Cambridge University Press, Cambridge, 1981. Now we come to the end of the session. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Until then, goodbye.